All right, folks. Yeah, my name is Michael Alden, and we are here today uh, in Blue Bay Studios interviewing, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, business people that are, that are out there doing real stuff, I like to say. They're making real money, they're overcoming real obstacles, and they're doing real things. And so I'm really, really happy to have with me my next guest. He is the president and founder of, of Buddy Boy Barbecue Sauce. His name is Matt Filetra. Uh, I, I must say that I know Matt uh, from a, a, another uh, life of ours. We both coach U10 soccer together, so this is kind of how this whole thing happened. Matt has actually been uh, in business for a long time as well. He's been in the in the kind of the computer business for a long time, but this is really his passion. I'm really, really excited to talk to him and actually ask him some of the questions, again, that we've asked others, um, you know, that's really what's, what's really made him uh, successful and, and what is growing his business. He's got a lot of exciting things going on with Buddy Boy Sauce. I will also say, as when we show it, I've tried it. I love it. So I am a little bit biased. <laughs> we were talking about it as well as my uh, nine and a half year old little girl loves it as well. So, Matt, thanks for being my guest. My pleasure, Mike. Thanks for having me. So, um, one of the things uh, that I like to ask uh, a lot of my a lot of my guests is, and you've, you probably you, I know you've heard me before talk about this. We talk about success in here a lot. What is success to some people? And and for you, Matt, how do you define success? Well, that that is pretty much one of the most open ended questions ever. Sure. So I'll try to keep it as brief as I can. Okay. I think there are two ways to look at success. One is um, achieving your goals. Sure. And the other is you know, the process that you go about through achieving those goals. Sure. I, I define success as how do I want to be looked at in the marketplace? I, I'm one of those folks that I, for good or bad, I want people to take the products that I'm doing, the, the food that I'm making, and I want them to see value in it. Sure. And if I get that, I feel like I'm a success. Now, sure. I can get more, uh, you know, tactical about it and say, sure. I want to, you know, success is being in every supermarket in America with Buddy Boy right. and all that. And that's important, and I do want that. Right. But I also want to make sure that I'm creating a product that I feel good about. Sure. That I I see kids like your nine-and-a-half-year-old right. right. eat, and I know I'm not putting junk into their bodies. Right. And that they're enjoying it and sure. that they're happy. That's how I consider success. And then way more important than that, I want my family to be happy. I want them to have everything they need. Sure. And I want them to grow up in a, in a loving environment. To me, if I do both of those things, that's success. But you know what? That's uh, that's a great answer to a, a ridiculously open-ended question, is I think <laughs> how you, <laughs> how you uh, phrased it. So again, I know you've been in business for a long time in the computer business world, and I know this is, again, really your passion, so I really want to um, tailor this question towards Buddy Boy specifically. Okay. Uh, what has been your biggest professional obstacle, and how did you overcome it uh, with Buddy Boy? Well, uh, this might take down a path you weren't expecting, but uh, my biggest obstacle uh, in the last decade, really, even when I was con contemplating doing something with, uh, with a food product and, and, and barbecue sauce, was... Um, really battling a, the personal battle. I, I went through a real significant bout of depression. Okay. And um, I, I, it was crippling. I sure. couldn't. I couldn't work. Yep. I, did, I couldn't interact. Um, I just thought everything was uh, crashing down. Sure. And it and it took me some time to to get out of that. But what what happened was through uh, talking. Sure. Having friends that have been in similar situations. Sure. Uh, uh, talking with therapists and things sure. like that, really retraining your mind, right? Your mindset of what, what is good, what right. is bad, what is dangerous. Sure. Are you in danger? Things like that. Right. I, I try to take a much different approach these days in how I approach conflict, how I approach a challenge, sure. uh, a roadblock. Uh, you know, it, it really gives you the opportunity to to learn a lot about yourself. Sure. Learn not only what you're capable of, but what all the folks around you are capable of. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that I don't feel blue some days. Sure. I think, uh, but I also want people to understand there's no taboo behind it anymore. Right. Everyone feels that way at some point. It's how you deal with it. And that has been my biggest obstacle. And, uh, again, it's... it's it takes a village sure, to get through something like that. You, you know what? You're right. I, I wasn't expecting that, but I, I've talked about it myself before. Uh, you know, I've, I've had anxiety issues uh, in the past. I think a lot, I think it's, well, 
I've read a lot of articles about entrepreneurs, and depression and anxiety uh, in the, within entrepreneurs are exceedingly, they're, they're higher than almost any, any profession out there. I think maybe doctors and lawyers are, might be right behind it. Um, but that's, you know, that's something that I'm glad you did talk about that because a lot of people, uh, again, especially entrepreneurs, are faced with that, and they don't do anything about it. Yeah, and I think the reason why entrepreneurs would be at that is not so much the stress that uh, exterior the exterior stress it's the interior stress that you put on yourself sure uh, i've got to i'm putting every penny i have into this right. oh my gosh if it doesn't work right well, how am i going to pay the mortgage my right. kid's going to have a home right you put all that in and it just can consume you and eat you up you're in a any kind of thing forget about uh barbecue so but it, sure. if you're in a sales job oh, i didn't make my number this month right i'm not going to get a commission check oh no and, right but if you if you understand and if you can kind of compartmentalize certain things and look at it and 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 just go down the not not the easy path which is down the drain right but be able to look at and, I, and i'm not one of those uh eternal optimists oh the glass is half full you right. know the glass has liquid in it just <laughs> right. drink it and shut up i really think it's it, it is the right attitude that you have right and and, and just keep your eye and i'm another cliche keep sure. your eye on the ball right but it's true it really is. Focus. Keep, keep your focus. Sure. And if you can do that, you got to shut Well, you know, I'm going to I'm just going to jump to I have a look sure. at this question because what you just brought up, but I'm going to jump this next question. What do you do outside of business to handle the stress, to deal with the anxiety, to even again to to deal with uh, like you've mentioned the depression? What do you do that other, you know, others maybe don't even know about <clears throat> and maybe haven't done that help you deal with the stress? Well, it's funny because there's really, outside of work, I do two things. And one of them I do with you. Right. Uh, we coach uh, youth soccer. And I coach a U10 team with, with yourself. And right. I also coach a U8 team. I have daughters on the U10 and a daughter on the U8. Right. I, when I'm on the practice field or when I'm in a game and I'm on the sideline and we're coaching together, right. I don't think about buddy boy. I don't think about the computer parts business. Right. I don't think about the mortgage. I right. think about how the girls are doing, if they're having fun. And, right. and as much as I get riled up at games like you right. do as well and right. we, get, we get fired up, we get so into it, to me that's, that's a real great way to just kind of decompress and just focus the energy on the girls. Sure. And the other, the other major thing, and it sounds funny because it's, well, it's, you're still kind of working. I love to cook at home. Right. And I love to cook with my daughters. Sure. And my wife. My right. wife is will blow me, my doors off anyway right. in, the, right. in the kitchen. But when I can get, get her out of there so she doesn't show me up, I love cooking with, I have the three best sous chefs you could ever ask for. Right. And we have so much fun. I've shown them techniques, knife skills. I encourage everybody, if you enjoy cooking, get right. your kids involved. Sure. Because even if it's not for a recipe I'm working on for Buddy Boy, just making a dessert with them, it can just bring you just tons of pleasure. And you get to eat chocolate. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, I like that. So it's doing stuff with your family, and then it's just doing stuff that is totally unrelated to the business. And the U10 soccer, and, and I've talked about it before with some others. I've never really coached. I haven't coached before. And for me, it is probably the most fun I've had in a long time. And it just... You know, these girls, obviously our daughters are playing, so that brings us joy to see our own daughters do mm -hmm. well, but it brings you this also this overwhelming joy uh, to see our, the kids that we coach, you know, do better, mm -hmm. overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and funny, our team is really, really good. And Matt and I were talking, <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about our team is, is really, really good. We get nervous. Um, I'm going to press this button right here. We get nervous because they score too many goals, right? And, that, right. and that's just because, quite frankly, we're just awesome coaches, right? <laughs> uh, no, we're just, but yeah, you're right. So it's doing stuff outside, to, totally unrelated to the business. And yeah, the cooking may be related to Buddy Boy, but like you said, it's almost, it's really not. It's doing something right. with the family uh, and just not really necessarily thinking about it. Although mm -hmm. I'm sure as you are cooking, you probably come up with a new recipe or something um, when you're doing that. But well, the last dessert we did is probably going to end up in the cookbook. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, uh, in your business now, again, I know you have two separate businesses, but we're focusing really on the Buddy sure. Boy. In your business uh, with the Buddy Boy, what, other than coming here today and sitting down with me, what is uh, the most effective form of marketing for you? What's working out there? I know you actually showed me something right before we came in, uh, but what's really yeah. working? Well, actually, yeah, I mean... For for a while, we've only had product with Buddy Boy since last June. So we're still a very new company. We're sure. only in about uh, 17 or so stores around the North Shore. Sure. And uh, a lot of that is due to the fact of... Which, by the way, is... Time. I don't want to catch you up. Which, by oh, the way, is awesome. <laughs> and you're, you're essentially doing it yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's me yeah. and my dad. Right. Okay, right. And so, uh, right. Yeah. We, we do it together. Right. And, um, but to physically be able to go and... Uh, 
approach the stores, talk with them, sure. set up demos, and do all that. We get we get in about seventeen, but you know we just recently uh, got our big. Uh, the big close was we were now accepted into Whole Foods Market, which is going to be really good for us. But how do we get all those folks to understand who we are? And we put out, we tried some videos and put them out on Facebook, and they went to some people, and I spent some money to, to boost them and found out that it just wasn't working. So sure. wh- what we're really doing now is targeted audience uh, uh, campaigns. Okay. Um, what do you mean by that? By targeted audience, I mean people that, uh, for example have an affinity for cooking, for barbecue, for healthy eating. Uh, our products are gluten-free, sure. people that like gluten-free. And you can actually go into Facebook, create a custom audience based on all these criteria, and it will target your ads just to the people that you want to target them to. Sure. And so we just did the, a video launch, very short video, 15-second blah, right. that uh, let people know that we're in Whole Foods and Swamps Get Mass. Right. And we... we uh, did a super targeted search of just the surrounding community around that store. Sure. We've had a tremendous, like about five times what Facebook says is good. Right. That's the response we've got on the views. So, it, so it's, it's a, a really it's a, targeted approach is that's the key. A, that's what I was going to say. So, yeah. so it's a well thought out target. It's not the shotgun approach. It's not just spending money boosting. It's right. really trying to figure out who your customers are, mm-hmm. where they are, and then spending the money there. Yeah. And for folks that need to do it, not at a store or a regional level, how, how do you do it? Well, let's say you have uh, 500 likes on your Facebook page. You can also create a separate audience of people that have similar likes to who already like you. Right. There's a lot of techniques within Facebook to be able to use that. And then there are others, too. So do Google, you like me, like me, or do you just like me? I like you, like you, right. a little bit. <laughs> but uh, but there's, there's all different ways. And even if you want to do it nationally, finding people... Spe- specifying their interests. So you're saying so right now, because a lot of people I think are having trouble still to this day, and Facebook is obviously making billions of dollars or what mm-hmm. have you. Um, so you're saying right now your most effective form of marketing is essentially Facebook targeted advertising, yes? Right now. Right. And uh, we're, we're going to look to other things as well. Sure. And But um, for right now, bang for your buck. And if mm-hmm. you have just a little bit of, of creativity and a right. little bit of um, knowledge with how Facebook defines things, sure. which you can see right online right. very easily, um, yeah, I've done it before myself. It's not, that compl- it's not that complicated. Yeah. A lot of stuff is really complicated. I, I've gotten over 550 views on that one ad we did, right. and it's cost me two cents for each person that has clicked it. Right. So, I mean, my marketing budget, as you sure, can imagine, right, is yeah. not very extensive. Right. So well, we need to take advantage of the of the social media. Sure. Well, that that's great that it's working. Uh, and Periscope. Periscope is going to do. <laughs> we have, I think we have three people watching this right now. But that's wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if we. Um, I have a sentence that I want you to complete. If my <clears throat> company lacks blank, then we will not succeed. Oh, I would say creativity. Okay. And and I mean creativity in a couple of different avenues. One, from a product development standpoint, um, uh, you know, how are we going to be creative in the products that we launch? Uh, they're always going to be gluten free. They're always sure. going to have no high fructose corn syrup. That that part's a given. But how are we going to engage uh, the flavors that people really enjoy? See, our our sauce is a little unique. It, it's it's pulled from different flavors of the different barbecue regions. It's, sure. it's a little it's a little different than your standard uh, either a thick sauce or a super thin sauce. It's kind of different. So creativity is important. And okay. I think creativity is not just in product development, but in the marketing like we just spoke about. Right. Doing those those quick shot videos, targeting your audiences, right. learning listening to what's happening with other people, watching what your competitors, being creative in how you approach all of that. Sure. I think is the key. All right. I like that. What advice, Matt, would you give young people that are maybe uh, in the workforce, entering the workforce, or even young entrepreneurs right now to, that can help them grow? Again, whether they just want to you know, become the next senior vice president or they want to grow their business, what, uh, what, what advice would you give them? Well, I've had two pretty amazing uh, business mentors in my life, one in the food business, one in the computer parts business. Uh, Ted Dispenza in the food business told me one time when I said, I, I made a flippant comment about if it ain't broke, don't fix it, boss. What's why do we gotta change the wine list? And he looked right at me and he said, If you always do what you did, you'll always get what you got. Like it. And that it that just it, it hit me. If like you a always punch, do what you did, you always, always get, what, get you what, got. what you got. So right. if you don't grow, if you don't adapt, if you don't change, sure. you're just gonna stay where you were. Right. You're never gonna grow, you're never gonna advance. Right. That has always resonated with me. Sure. And I think about that every single day and I try to help people understand that aspect. 
the other bit of advice. So don't be afraid. So this kind of ties back to your mm -hmm. creativity as well. Don't be afraid to kind of do other things. Reinvent yourself of, reinvent, yeah. if you have to. Right. If it's not working, it, right. and sometimes it might be working, but you have to look on the threshold of right. where's the ceiling here? Right. Do I need to start to think about when this starts to not right. work? And what you else have is coming? You have that vision and creativity. I think of when I, when you threw, I think coming? of Polaroid. Yeah. Sure. Drive, we drive past that building all the time and think of Polaroid mm -hmm. and, and really what happened to them and they just, you know, they kind of really weren't thinking. Um, we, we have number one market share in this product. Right. We It's the instant camera. We right. own it. We had right. not, you know, They probably had 90% at one point. Right. And then digital cameras came out and they got, they jumped on board way too, way too late, late. Right. to catch up. Nokia would be another great example of right. that. They're trying to climb out of the cellar, but who didn't have a Nokia phone way back when? Right. And they just you got still blown have away. I have several. <laughs> <laughs> I have several. Well, they have burner phones when I'm uh, going undercover. Uh, but my the other be, uh, amazing piece of advice from uh, was from uh, another great mentor and friend, Paul Knight, who told me, "Look, at it is it more important to be right or to get what you want?" Sure. And I think anybody with rational thought would say it's better to get what you want. Right. So being for young people today that think they know everything, and I still think I know a sure. lot of things, and right. I I'm starting to understand I don't know anything. Right. Um, you know, you don't have to be right all the time. You can compromise. You can look at things in a, in a different way to be able to achieve what you want sure. uh, without getting up in people's faces and pounding your point home right. and, and beating your chest. It, it doesn't work anymore. Um, so, I mean, if... if that's, I think know, that's, that, that is two things, great I think, sound advice. I like the other one, but I really like that one, too, because when I think about, again, I just talked about this a couple of days ago, when I think about the, the, the Y generation or the younger generation that really hasn't had all the interactions that you and I have had, mm. they're more concerned about being right. Right. not getting what they want. Oh, and they I've been there, my friend. Right. Yeah. And, you just <laughs> and I'm it, sure you have as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I think we all have. Yeah. Where you just regret. Right. And just think about, why did I do that? Right. And, and I'm not saying I'm 100% on it. Sure. Uh, but there are times when I'll, I'll snap back a little bit. But, right. But if you can just in your head, just understand, first of all, you might be right. Right. You're probably not. Sure. <laughs> but you might be right, but it's irrelevant. Sure. You need to achieve the goal. You right. need to get to where you need to go. Sure. That's it. I love it. I love it. Now, um, in this day and age, and we kind of touched upon it, I think, a little bit earlier with the Facebook, uh, and a lot of the people that we've talked to earlier have given really the same answer, but in this day and age, what do you think the most effective form of communication is? With There's so many out there. We're obviously, we have Periscope, we have mm -hmm. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, Snapchat, all these things that are out there. What do you right. think is the most, the telephone, which I actually love, what mm -hmm. is the most effective form of communication for you, to, and, and that's helping you grow your business? Well, I think yeah, it's a, a little bit of a two-parter as well because I think um, my I will never think other than this. The best form of communication is this, is sure. sitting across from somebody and having a conversation, getting to know them, understanding their pains and, and how you can possibly help them. Sure. That is the 100% best form of communication. However, when you talk about communication to grow your business, then yeah. That's great, but however, if you need to do from a marketing perspective, right now, uh, I think the social media is tremendous. I mean, I've just started uh, doing things on Periscope, right. uh, on your recommendation. Sure. Uh, we, we do Twitter. We've got the videos now on the Facebook and and uh, and. Um, YouTube, you know, I think you have you, some stuff on YouTube, we, right? We've got a YouTube yeah. channel that, right. again, again, and we're starting now sure. to build those, build the uh, the content right. for those. So right now, I think that is the best way, is, again, as long as you target it properly, sure. to get in front of everybody and communicate with your audience. Right. Um, but as far as from a business perspective, you, you can get, you know, this far uh, on, a, on an email, maybe this far on a, on a phone call, right. but you're going to get this far on a face-to-face, -face, right. and you cannot replace this right ever i love it i love it if you could leave our viewers and listeners matt with and by the way you've given some great information uh if you could leave our viewers with one last tidbit something that you've done uh something that you've seen that really works that has really helped you get to where you are today uh something that that could probably kind of you know help with anybody and really in any business what would it be well i think the the one thing that and again, if I didn't have Ted and Paul giving me those two amazing bits of advice, I never would have gotten here in my life sure. where I can step back and say, I don't know. I need help. Sure. I need to ask for help. Right. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. Sure. That's, a, that's another one of those cliches, but it's fact. Yeah. Asking for help is a sign of strength. Anyone who sees otherwise is 
just thinking it wrong. Right. A lot of times they say, well, it's your opinion. No, it's wrong. Right. That's, that's one of the few times I'll be that definitive about that kind of question. You have to understand there are people around you that are smarter than you, that are better at certain things than you. When I needed to hire a guy in my computer business to uh, refurbish laptops, I didn't. I wanted a guy who could blow me away with his knowledge of hardware and how things work. I wanted that guy. Sure. When I needed to do video marketing, I went to uh, a friend that is in that business who understands the concept. When I needed to find a, someone to bottle Buddy Boy, right. I went to a guy I know who started his own company and sat down with him and asked him, well, who should I speak with? What what can you help me with? Right. And, they, and folks will love to help. Everybody... Uh, if, if they're even a half decent person, right. they want to help you. Sure. Go and get the help. Right. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That's the best thing I could leave them with. That is uh, some some amazing advice. Now, before I usually uh, would would let you go, but but I do before I let you go, I, I want to talk a little bit about you know Matt's product. Oh, Again, it's it's, it's Buddy Boy uh, Barbecue. Uh, oh, let me just we're running out of power here. Uh, again, it's uh, Buddy Boy Barbecue Sauce. It's, uh, what is it, BuddyBoy.com, right? Is it, uh, is it? Buddy Boy BBQ. BuddyBoyBBQ.com. So you yep. have a couple different things. Tell us a little bit about your, your products. I know you sure. have three. Uh, and um, tell me how you came up with it. Because mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing, again, I think, um, <clears throat> is that you didn't really know much about this business. You just kind of got into it and figured it out. Tell us about each product and sure. how it works. Well, it's interesting because uh, our, our latest product is the Dry Rub, which we just launched. It's not even on store shelves yet. Uh, and this was actually what I created about 10 years ago. Okay. I started to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it until I finally got to a point where I had all these great flavors in it. And I didn't, I couldn't match it with a barbecue sauce that I could readily find. Sure. And I think the reason was because I used to travel a lot for work and I used to hit all the barbecue areas and I used to make sure I got some good barbecue at every single area. Right. So I really enjoyed aspects of the North Carolina with that vinegar and, and, the, and that acidity. And I really enjoyed even the South Carolina, which is mustard based. And then you go out to like Kansas City and Memphis, St. Louis, they use a lot more of the thicker sauces with tomato paste based. You go down to Texas, and they're using a lot of earthiness, a lot of earthy tones. Sure. So I wanted to take all of that and figure out how to meld it into one sauce. So I sat down at the kitchen table, and I wrote out all the ingredients I knew I wanted in the sauce. And it contained no garbage. It was just real ingredients. And then I made, I put them all in a pot, and it was disgusting. <laughs> it was disgusting. Right. Uh, so then I sat down and said, okay. Let's, you know, then I really started to work on, you know, the levels of what I was doing. And sure. after a couple of batches, I was actually pretty impressed with myself that I was able to get it done, uh, to get it to a point where I enjoyed it. Uh, it didn't take, you know, it took about half a dozen batches. Right. And then I started to sample it around. I started to bring it to friends, family, uh, people in the business. Um, but the real clincher was when I brought it down to Austin, Texas with me, a company I'd worked for at the time. Uh, said, get don't even bring your Boston barbecue sauce. What are you stupid? Don't right. even. What? Well, come on. And I said, well, you know, you, you, you try it out. Let me know. Right. Well, not only did all those dudes just flip out over it, but they uh, they said, if you don't start a company, you're a jerk. Right. Uh, they said other words, but we'll right. keep it clean for the video. <laughs> um, and so I, you know, I got together with my uh, with my dad, and I said, you know, you know, my dad is retired, but he's sure. a retired CFO. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, geez, man, we might have something here. Right. Like, what do you think? And uh, he said, hey, let's give it a shot. Right. And uh, and the fellows down in Austin mm -hmm. said, we want something with just a little bit of a bite, a little bit of a kick. So that's really what made Sweet Heat happen. Okay. So, uh, you know, no preservatives, gluten free, really versatile, thin enough to marinate with, thick enough to baste with, you know, all that good stuff. But it just has a real nice flavor, and um, and I'm really proud of the ingredients. And we just launched the dry rub, and we have other products uh, that are that are in the pipeline. Uh, and the nice thing about the dry rub is it, it it's it uh, sometimes dry rubs are either really sweet or really uh, spicy. Uh, what I try to do is get that blend of sweet and savory. Right. Um, and again, earthy tones, really different things using um, real smoked paprika, no artificial smoke flavors or any of that stuff, just real stuff. All natural. It's just all the products I have are, are things you can read every ingredient. Right. There's no smoke and mirrors. Right. I, I fully disclose everything. Sure. Well, you know, again, I actually, I love them all. I just had the <laughs> we were just talking about earlier. I, I tried the dry rub. 
Uh, it, it's really, really great stuff. Again, it's Buddy uh, Buddy Boy. It's Buddy Boy BBQ. Uh, dot com. Before I do let you go, one of the things that I really liked what you just said was is you went through a process and it wasn't easy and you made mistakes oh, yeah. and, you, and you kept going and then you got to the point, like you said, where someone said, if you don't start a company, you're silly uh, not to. Right. Um, and I always tell people, don't be that guy that said, if I had only done it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you did it because it's a great product. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate Matt, the time. Thanks, thanks for being my guest again. My name is Michael Alden. We're here in Blue Bay Studios. Mm -hmm. He is the founder of Buddy Boy Barbecue Sauce. Again, it's buddyboybbq.com. And uh, again, thanks for being here. Thanks.